Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you my full process drawing and painting this snowy scenery outside my living room window. It was a really cold day, so I stayed nice and warm at home. And the materials that I, I used to sketch in my art journal are very simple. So I have one watercolor palette. It's Etcher brand with 24 half pan watercolors. And I used two water brushes for painting. And I cleaned these two brushes by uh, just cleaning them on a towel. And for the drawing part, I just used one fine liner. So we had another snowstorm right after Christmas in Vancouver. Okay, so I'm gonna sketch on the left hand side of the page spread. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna draw a frame first so it's easier to fit everything inside and then do a tiny little frame there write down the date and the date okay so first of all i'm drawing this snow covered evergreen bush on the right hand side of the composition this is the very first thing in the foreground so when trees and bushes are being covered by the snow, they look very abstract. So I'm just following what I see and just trust what I see. Just moving my pen really quickly to capture these interesting shapes. And also using multiple hatching lines to show the dark areas or parts of the tree. Okay, that's it. That's pretty much it for this tree. A lot of it is actually white. Okay, so the next main object that I see in this scenery, pretty close to this bush, is this lamp in the courtyard. So just drawing that and the two lamps on both sides. And then behind the lamp are the rails. So behind the lamp are the rails in large sections surrounding the houses on the other side of the courtyard. So just finishing drawing the large sections first and now drawing these detailed rails for each section. So when you're drawing these little details, don't worry about the uh, preciseness. If you miss a rail piece or two, don't worry about that. And now just adding a few branches and twigs that I see reaching in in the foreground here and the walkway line the snow covered boundaries here okay so the next large object that i see in the next layer behind the rails is this big crab apple tree so as you can see i started drawing the uh, trunk first and then drawing the branches extending the branches with twigs And just paying attention to the uh, form of these bare branches and twigs to make sure um, not drawing way too big or too small. So while I'm drawing this tree, I'm also comparing it with the other objects that I already drew around it to think about its proportion. Okay, that's it for the tree. And there's a little bit of a sideway rail there with a little bit of perspective. And there's another um, little bare branch bush over here and another one here below the crab apple tree behind the rails. Here's another little one. Okay, so as I finish drawing these trees and bushes in the middle ground, on the very back, I have the house on the left hand side. So now, as you can see, I started building its, um, its form reaching all the way to the very top of this image the rooftop the triangle shape and the all the other structures that i see in big and small shapes a lot of vertical lines so when drawing vertical lines or horizontal lines in architecture don't worry about you know being perfect like architects 
We're artists. We don't have to draw perfect straight lines, and the lines that are not so perfectly straight actually have more life in them. And now I'm just adding these windows after drawing the large shapes of the house, and keep building on the next floor. So as you can see, the way that I sketch buildings is to start with the、uh, general outline first, and then moving in to the large chunks of structures, and then to the smaller shapes, like the windows, doors. So drawing architectures from general to specific is a really great technique to avoid stress. I think this procedure is really great for sketching almost any architecture or any complex subject matter. It's really important to take it one step at a time, and know what you're doing and how you're doing it. So yes, so before I started sketching or while I'm sketching, I always have a pretty clear mind map inside my head, is that、like、guiding me how to、um, let the sketch unfold next. So other than using lines, I'm also using solid black shapes to fill in the little spaces like windows. Okay, and finishing up this house over here, adding final bits of、um, parallel lines, and intensify this crab apple tree in the foreground by intensifying the lines of the tree trunk. So this way, it stands out better. And now I'm starting to draw the general outline of the house on the right-hand side. Using the same thinking and seeing technique, from large to small. Okay, so now I'm actually drawing this house behind, in between these two. It's mostly being covered by these two houses. Lots of overlapping in here. All right, and moving back, there's a large evergreen tree covering most of this house. So now I'm just focusing on the contour outline of the evergreen, and adding a little bit inner texture. So I'm just drawing the main、um, shapes that I see inside the contour of this tree. Not every single piece that I see. So when doing urban sketching, I think it's really、um, important to include a nice balance of human-made structures like houses, and other organic things like trees and bushes. In this way, I think there's more life in an urban sketch. And now I'm just finishing up drawing the upper floor of the house behind this evergreen tree, coloring in the windows with solid black. And now drawing the next floor below. Keep adding these parallel lines on the exterior of the house. Okay, window frames. I think there's a door there being covered. Another layer of frames and the window panels. Again, just、uh, hatching that with solid black, and that's it for the drawing part. And just adding some final、um, parallel lines there for the exterior of the house that I forgot to do. So first of all, I'm wetting the sky area first with almost water, and just mixing a tiny bit of leftover yellow and and yellow ochre because the sky is just.、Um, Light grayish, but with a little bit of sunshine coming through the layers of clouds. And now I'm using、um, yellow ochre mixed with a tiny bit of green to paint the exteriors of the houses. Okay, and now I'm just adding these punches. Of burnt sienna, mixing with a little bit of ultramarine blue, for the walkway in the courtyard. 
and also using the same color to add the bits of uh, rooftop things sticking out from the snow. It's very interesting that this evergreen tree's color is looking much muted compared to um, when it's in the summer or on other days when it's warmer. So I mix this green by mixing Viridian Green with a little bit of burnt sienna and a tiny bit of ultramarine blue. And this evergreen bush is looking fresher compared to the one on the back. So I just use Viridian Green. And most part of that bush is covered by the snow, so I just, just leave it white painting this green door of my neighbors and the windows during the day they look kind of like a turquoise blue kind of reflecting the tree colors around it and now I'm just using the leftover burnt sienna mixed with ultramarine blue the leftover color mixing with a lot of water to add the shade for the snow here and there So when painting a winter scenery like this and being very cautious, I'm adding shade colors very slowly and a little bit by little bit. So sometimes when we paint, the brush strokes might look invisible, but over time it is something for the painting. Okay, now I'm just adding more obvious shades for the exterior of the houses here. Because there's no sunshine, so the light and shade is barely visible, but there's still a bit here and there as I see, as I feel. Okay, now I'm just adding teeny tiny bits of uh, shade for the snow clusters on here. And also the rooftops are not perfectly flat white, so I just add one brush stroke of shade color on there too. And just intensify the exterior color of the houses a little bit more, just one tiny light layer. Okay, so now I decided to add a bit of ultramarine blue mixed with a little bit green and a tiny bit of purple for the shade of the clouds in the overcast sky and not over stirring it and now just adding another layer for this evergreen tree so it looks stronger now as you can see this evergreen tree's color it looks more intense compared to the houses behind because i mix in less water and more paint pigment in it all right that's it for today's video so thank you so much for watching if you like it please click like and leave me a comment below subscribe to my channel for weekly updates I will see you again very soon. And by the way, I'll be doing live sketch sessions every Sunday this month, starting this Sunday. And you can learn more about this by clicking the link in the description part of the video. And I'll also be offering lessons for beginners starting on January the 15th. So if you have been drawing and painting for a while and you're still looking for ways to improve, I will show you the fundamentals of drawing, seeing, and observing, so you can improve faster. And again, the link to sign up is in the description part of this video.